What's up, everybody? This is Kyron Williams for the Los Angeles Rams running back, and I'm tuned in with the Fantasy Football Counselor. Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Hope everyone's having an outstanding morning. Got a great video here for your commute. We are talking about five mid-round to later sleepers you must target for massive value, guys. This is a very important video. Tons of content here for you. I also want to talk a little bit about some latest news and notes and, of course, some draft strategy as well. Because some of these guys, I want to get this out of my system, some of these guys coming off in the early rounds aren't going to be worth it. We're going to talk about who they are a little bit, give you guys some context. We are full flow draft season. I want to make sure you guys are fully ready. I want you guys 100% going into these drafts. So if you are new to the channel, guys, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up, guys. It really, really helps the channel. And of course, if you have not got the 16-round draft solution, you need to secure that right now. It's going to put you guys light years ahead of everybody else in your league. You're literally going to squash your league because you're going to have a backup plan for a backup plan. You're going to have all the optimal players. You're going to omit, omit all of those guys that are going to bust this year. So grab the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. You guys are going to be light years ahead of everybody in your league. Secure it now. I also offer direct coaching. We can jump on a phone call and look after all of your fantasy football needs and requirements directly via phone call. You simply book a call. It shows up in my calendar, and that's it. <laughs> like, I give you a call. Okay, guys? So book a half-hour call with me. I've linked it below. And also Patreon group. Join the Fantasy Frontlines for in-season and also some direct access, some Q&A, waiver wire, exclusive videos, that type of thing, right, for the in-season community, Okay. Patreon, but the main thing you want to get is that 60 round draft solution. Gonna put you light years ahead of the sheep, okay? So let's talk a little bit about uh, latest news and notes. There's no breaking Brad here today, just me. We're gonna get to it, but I can imitate breaking Brad, can't I? We now, I can't do it. We now have breaking news, okay? I don't do it as good. I, I just don't. I tried, right? All right, so uh, let's get to it. Um, Bo Nix is uh, labeled a starter. I mean, this I saw this coming, I saw the talent. I've got a lot of Troy Franklin on my bench as like a deeper stash, but he hasn't been doing too well in camp. Hopefully things kind of start turning up for him, but because he's got the report, they played together in college, Bo Nix and Troy Franklin. There could be something there, but since he's named starter, maybe things will open up for Troy Franklin. Good news. I mean, if you are in a, you know, a two quarterback league, super flex could be a good third quarterback with some upside here. I always get question. You know, I'm always questionable about quarterbacks that are, rookies, right? You always got to question that situation. Be cautious if you are drafting them. Again, more in deeper leagues would be good, but I see some upside here with Bo Nix, finally labeled the start. okay? Uh, other news, Saquon Barkley had some sort of back issue. I guess he went off the field. I think it was a couple days ago, came back on. Anyway, he practiced yesterday. Really good news. I got some Saquon Barkley stock. That's good to hear. Uh, Tyreek Hill had the thumb you know, issue going on. It's minor. He should be ready week one. Nothing to worry about according to what coaches are saying. Good news there. Chuba Hubbard, who I have no stock in as well, had a knee issue. He's back to practice, was back yesterday. Good news for Chuba Hubbard. Owners or potential owners. Now, again, when Jonathan Brooks comes back, whenever he does, week five, hopefully, maybe earlier, then I really don't have any desire you know, for Chuba Hubbard. I, years to wow me, guys. I'm not wow, so no Chuba for me. No, no Chub, Chub, Chuba for me, okay? Also, uh, final thing in the news I want to mention here, unless something breaks between the time of this recording and the morning here, because I record this the day before, Jalen Warren uh, not practicing. Apparently, his hammy is not that serious. No practice right now, but apparently coach is saying it's not that serious. So maybe Jalen Warren week one could be back. We know how those hammies linger. Um, you know, hopefully he's okay. All right. All right. So let's get to these, uh, mid round sleepers. I do want to talk a little bit about, again, I've talked in addresses in a ton of other videos. If you are new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it. This is going to be news to you, but there's a lot of disaster going on, especially in the early rounds. I know we're talking mid rounds here, but the, where I'm trying to get to is this, is that some of these guys I'm going to recommend these five players could genuinely and will outperform some of these earlier round guys. Quick example here, right? Keenan Allen coming off very early, round four to five. DJ Moore coming off round three to four, right? Nico Collins coming off round two to three. Nico Collins, give you a quick example here, some context. Nico Collins finished 12th last year, okay? 
12th. He had 100, what do you have, 109 targets. Dell finished 39th last year. He didn't play the entire season. Tank Dell on the same team only had 75 targets. He didn't play the full season. So let's do some common sense and logic. Everyone's drafting Nico Collins round two, okay? As late as round, he's not getting past round three, which is ludicrous, okay? He finished 12th last year with 109 targets, which is 25th in targets amongst wide receivers, which sucks. Dell was only held to 75 targets because he was banged up. He was, he was hurt, right? So Dell comes back healthy. Just right off Dell coming back, you got to imagine that Nico's going to see a drop in targets from the 109, which was already low to begin with, right? Finishing outside the top 10. And then you bring in Stefan Diggs, who I believe could be the one, right? He's the best talented guy out of the bunch. I mean, Dell's got that rapport with CJ Stroud. But, you know, when you look at, I was just watching some training camp, the separation that Diggs is creating between some of these teams they're playing in training camp is like, wow, this guy is just, you know, looking really, really good. He demands the ball. So, again, just thinking logically and common sense, which is something that is not, you know, advertised in fantasy football. Now, common sense ain't that common in this industry. They just go on rankings, which don't help you. You know, I would assume here, based on logic and common sense, that Nico Collins is going to see a drop in targets, and he just he finished 12th. Another quick example, guys, this is very, very important insight here. DJ Moore last year finished 6th, 136 targets, finished 6th amongst wide receivers. Keenan Allen finished 8th with 150 targets, okay? 136 targets or whatever DJ Moore had, 150 targets Keenan Allen had, because Keenan Allen was force-fed last year with the Chargers. They're on the same team. So... And you draft the top wide receiver prospect in Roma Duza, and you got a rookie wide receiver, uh, rookie quarterback. Sorry, man, oh man, you got target dilution to the fullest. And all these guys are coming off early. Another quick example: Ayuk only 105 targets last year, finished 14th. Debo Samuel only 89 targets, finished 15th. These guys are coming off round three. Both like why? Why? You know, and you got you know Kittle, you got you know Christian McCaffrey. They drafted a first round rookie Persall. Dude, it's a disaster there. And I want to make one quick note here before we move on to these sleepers. This is very, very important insight here. A.J. Brown finished fifth last year, okay? Devontae Smith. I'm just trying to give you a contract with two wide receivers that had decent target share. 158 target, eight targets for A.J. Brown finishing fifth. 112 targets for Devontae Smith, Smith finished 19th. And that's with two good, good receivers, okay? Not a three-headed monster situation that you're seeing with like the Texans, for example, okay? Or even the Bears. And that's with, you know, a proven Jalen Hurts. So, again, Devontae Smith, who was the two on that team, and one person is going to have to go to the two position, finish 19th with 112 targets. And again, to put that in context, okay? Just to give you guys some point of reference. Anyways, something to think about in those early rounds. Point being, as we're getting to these mid-round sleepers, dude, these guys could get flooded with volume, right? And, you're, you know, you're getting these guys for a, an amazing value, okay? Do you know what I'm saying? So, what I've been doing, particularly with wide receiver, is going mid to late rounds, and I explain all this in the 60 round draft session. All right, let's rip through these five here for you mid round sleepers. The first one is sitting at 71 overall, wide receiver 36 is Calvin Ridley. Finished 18th last year with 136 targets, over 1,000 yards, and eight, t- eight touchdowns. Calvin Ridley and Will Levis could really be a thing this year absolute boom upside this entire team is being slept on i'm telling you okay so when i'm looking at calvin ridley in the mid rounds i'm like dude i'm getting a wide receiver one for massive value now hopkins is there they got some other options but i really genuinely believe that ridley is the main guy there young dynamic amazing explosive super fast great route runner he is going to be an outlet for will leave us the entire season Love, love, love the upside, Calvin Ridley, okay? Second sleeper happens to be on the same team as Tajay Spear, Spears, sitting as RB31. Believe it or not, which is crazy, Pollard is sitting ahead of him in the rankings, which is ludicrous. And we'll get to the next guy by third guy who is being slept on as well. Tajay Spears, 97 overall, RB31. There's 280 rushing attempts freed up. Guys, with Derrick Henry gone, this is amazing stuff. I'm telling you guys, Tajay Spears is primed to have an amazing season. He is better than Tony Pollard. Pollard is a failure. He was a backup for years, and he, he busted last year as a starter. 
okay, for the Cowboys. He's not good. I don't know what part of that you don't understand. Now, mind you, they paid him. They got to play him a little bit. I, I get it. But listen, I'm not sold on him. I like the value of Spears as an RB4 on your team, okay? Because I'm going top heavy running back. There's a guy I like round five who's kind of a mid round guy as well, which I explained in 16 rounds. And then I kind of like Taji as kind of my RB4 with some upside, okay? I do like him. I also like a bonus one for you, Trey Benson. They kind of come off in around the same area rounds, you know, as early as six. That's a bit of a reach, but more like round seven to nine. These guys come off, depending on how many people in your league and how, how aware people are. But Spears could absolutely tear it up. 280 attempts freed up, okay? The next guy I absolutely love. He's been tearing it up in trading camp. I've been talking about him in the entire offseason. And here's the crazy thing. The guy I'm talking about is Brian Thomas Jr., guys. This is what's crazy about Brian Thomas Jr. Wide receiver 48. We're talking about a first-round pick. Jacksonville Jaguars. Bounce back year for Trevor Lawrence. Sitting at 112 overall. Now, here's the crazy thing, okay? Christian Kirk who absolutely sucks, already got banged up here in training. He should be, he's back to camp or whatever. Absolutely sucks. When I say sucks, he's gar like garbage player, okay? Sitting as wide receiver 28 compared to Brian Thomas, who's the one wide receiver 48. This is why ADPs don't work, everybody. I'm telling you right now, Brian Thomas is the best wide receiver on this team, and it's not even close. Christian Kirk was always a wide receiver too. How do I know that? Well, he sucked years prior to getting signed by Jacksonville. And when he ended up on Jacksonville, Ridley came in and took that wide receiver one job. If you are a true one, you never let anybody else come in and take your job. Brian Thomas Jr. is the one on this team and you're getting him for amazing value, 112 overall. I mean, we're talking round nine. I mean, as I mean, again, some people are more warming up to him and get him coming up as early as seven. Again, it depends on the league, depends on how much hype He's doing well in camp. His ADP is, is starting to rise. Because I remember he's sitting at wide receiver 48 at the time of this recording. He was sitting as wide receiver like 54 a week or two ago. So climbing up the depth charts a little bit, climbing up the Ken Sheepsis rankings, and more and, pe- more and more people are going to ride him. Now, as soon as guys like this guy, the next guys I'm going to mention, next last guy I'm going to mention here, as soon as they break out, the Ken Sheepsis are on him. They're like, yeah, we love him, blah, blah. Last year, Nico Collins, wide receiver 55. Dell was like wide receiver 70. Now all of a sudden, Nico Collins around two. Are you guys crazy? This is the type of stuff, guys. Nobody's teaching this stuff. That's why 16 rounds is the truth because you're omitting these guys like the Christian Kirks of the world that aren't going to go anywhere, that have zero upside, and you're going for the home run hitters at the right ADP. So your, your roster is ironclad, and you guys are going to win your league. So I'm telling you guys, I do this for a living. I study this inside out. I know what I'm talking about here, Okay. Brian Thomas Jr., make sure he's on your roster one way or another, okay? Number four here, not an exciting one, but we got to talk about him, is Jared Goff. Sitting at 89 overall, QB 15. Again, everybody's so high on Jameer Gibbs, right? Everybody's so high on Amon Ross St. Brown. We're talking two first-round picks, right? And Sam Laporta's a second-round pick. Who's throwing the ball? It's Mr. Consistent, Jared Goff. Now, you're not getting that rushing upside, but you're going to get a whole lot of production and accuracy and consistency, right? Not a lot of interceptions thrown, a lot of touchdowns potentially thrown, and consistent points. You're getting 15 to 20 points out of this guy, almost guaranteed every single week. The fact that he's QB 15 is ludicrous, considering, guys, that this guy is safe and his weapons are being drafted in rounds one and two. Three of them, for that matter, okay? So, I'm telling you guys, Jared Goff, do I trust him as a starter? Not so much, but I do like him as a backup quarterback. But he, he could be started. I mean, he could definitely be started if you want to wait on quarterback. But I always like to get backups. the way As low as he is, I mean, you can get yourself a Josh Allen and back him up with Jared Goff, which is what I did in one league, to cover your potential lack of performance, bye weeks, or potential injury. Just make sure your quarterbacks are not on the same bye week, okay? Very, very important. But, I mean, Jared Goff, consistent as they come, Big time sleeper, okay? The last one here, before I get to him, I'm super excited about this guy. I got him on all my teams. Before I get to him, guys, hit that thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Smash it, tap it. Let me know a mid-round sleeper you love. Drop a comment below. I want to make this all trend interactive, guys, and make sure you guys do grab that 16-round draft so it'll put you guys light years ahead of the sheep, okay? Grab 16 rounds right now. The last guy here is don't be a donkey, draft lad, but conky, wide receiver 43, 100 overall, Amazing value for a guy who's going to be the wide receiver one on his team. 
with minimal competition. Now they got Brendan Rice. There's some upside there. He's a seventh round pick, son of Jerry Rice. Quinton Johnson's been absolutely sucking. And Josh Palmer's not a true one. I don't even know who else they got there. Chark or whatever who sucks as well. McConkey, tons of volume to be had here. Guys, when I look at drafting a wide receiver, especially a guy coming off around six to seven, immense value for a wide receiver one. I'm looking at who's throwing the ball. Herbert throws the ball just as much as anybody else. His foot's fine. He's back to practice. He's throwing. He'll be good to go. Herbert's going to be fine. He throws a lot. He's looking for a bounce back here coming off a down year. There's no Keenan Allen. They lost Austin Eckler on the checkdowns. They don't have any pass catching backs. Unless Kamani Vidal takes a step up, which I think he could. There's another sleeper for you guys. Kamani Vidal, Vidal, whatever. Um, I just don't like Gus Bus, right? So when you look at the situation, Lad McConkey in absolute prime position to succeed. Big time mid-round sleeper that's got top 10 upside written all over him, okay? Him and Brian Thomas to the absolute moon, all right? And I'm telling you, man, this is the year of the wide receiver rookies. There is some guys I don't like as much. Xavier Worthy could boom, right, with Hollywood Brown being banged up. You know, I'm just not as high on, on, on him. I just don't see he's going to get as much volume as some of these guys I'm mentioning. But, you know, there's there's a ton of wide receiver rookies that could do well, including some sleepers like maybe a Leggett or Franklin. But to know exactly who to draft and when to draft them, Go grab 16 rounds. And again, book a direct call with me. We could talk about it and hammer out the truth because rankings won't help you guys win. All right? Smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. Listen, I appreciate you guys being here. It means a lot to me. And uh, we'll keep the community going. We go year round. Every morning I do an episode here. Stay glued. Turn on the bell. And uh, keep your ear on the uh, on the beat here with this channel, okay? I appreciate you guys. Have yourself an outstanding day. Lad McConkey, Jared Goff, Brian Thomas Jr., Tajay Spears, Calvin Ridley, Look to rush them. Amazing value. Tons of upside. Tons of volume. Great situations. Fantasy football sleepers in the mid-round for you guys. Appreciate you guys. Have yourself a great day. I'm out.